Welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today we're going to be building some more dystopian industrial terrain for all your favorite war games. Let's do it! To make the basic structure, we're going to start with a couple items you can find around your household. These Tupperware lids, this peanut container, this pencil sharpener, this is the top from a spray paint bottle, this is a Gatorade lid, and we're basically just going to glue those all together vertically to make an interesting basic structure. There we go. Next I'm going to use white glue to add some strips of cardboard around the outside to break up the main cylinder shape of the sort of tank-like portion of the middle. I'm using the bottom of toy cars here to add some quick detail. Toy cars are good because they're cheap, they're all over the place at used stores and thrift stores, and they often have mechanical looking undersides and molded plastic that are really quick and easy to add some cool detail. To glue those on there, it's already looking a bit more interesting. Add some more squares of cardboard and another car part to the top portion. And then I'm going to add a piece from a small plastic sign on this panel here to create a bracket for a side pipe-like structure using some cheap pipes I got off Amazon. These are very inexpensive. A big bag of them is about $8. Once that's attached, I'm going to take this wire and cut off the top portion, gluing it to a piece of a water bottle, and then attaching that assembly to two Diet Coke caps that I glued together to make the little tower here. And then I'll glue that on top of the pipe. This piece is the plug for the water gun I used in one of my previous videos, which is a good lesson for why you always should save your pieces. I'm going to use this little loop shaped piece here because it has some nice rivets on it. I glue it to a piece of chipboard and then cut around the outside with a sharp X-Acto knife and this is going to make my access hatch. I glue all that to another one of these Gatorade lids to give it a bit of extra depth and I glue that all on. I use a bit of this plastic tennis racket to make a ladder so that it's easily accessible and then I glue some more plastic pieces to the side of the building including this part of a plastic car trailer which gives a nice bit of depth and another sort of side structure to the building to break it up a little bit. This piece is interesting because it has some holes in it which allow for a cool line of sight in your skirmish war games. Somebody can shoot someone else through that hole. Another bit of plastic from a different type of toy car makes a nice slanty roof-like bit. And that's the basic structure. Let's put a coat of paint on this and then do some more details. My standard paint scheme for these sorts of things are starts with a dark brown that's dry brushed heavily all over the whole structure and then a cheap acrylic silver dry brushed over top of that. For this next step I'm going to be heating some styrene rods over a candle to bend them into shape. If you're going to do this make sure you're in a well ventilated area and wearing a respirator. When in doubt, Google the safety data sheets for whatever material you're using. With that said, here's what I did. I took some needle nose pliers and gripped the end and then held it over the... Oh, that caught on fire. Okay, don't do that. This is... I included this footage so you can see what not to do. I held it too close to the flame and it melted. That's why I told you guys to have a fire extinguisher handy. Let's try this again. Hold it over the flame 
So it just starts to get a little bit soft and then bend it with the needle nose pliers. You should get a result something like this. Just hold it in place until it sets again and there you go. It should dry hard and that'll give you a nice little pipe-like bend. As with anything involving fire, there's also the possibility of burning yourself, so please be very careful. Once you have a few of these pieces, cut some small strips of cardboard with an X-Acto knife and using super glue, wrap them around specific parts of the pipe to give the ridges that piping has in the real world. Something like this is what you're going for. Using this takeout container sauce lid, I'm going to cut out some detail for the access hatch. I put a piece of circular chipboard, approximately the same size, in behind it, and then cut around it with scissors. Once that's done, I use an X-Acto knife to cut out the inside rim, leaving me with just the piece that I want in the shape that I want, which I then glue down with hot glue. There we go. I made this handle for opening the hatch out of some pieces of wire. It was a real nightmare and I didn't actually get good footage of it. Using some thin gauge wire, I'll make some electrical cables running from one portion to another, bending them to look like the natural sag that a cable would have from gravity. There are lots of holes in these little car part pieces that I used, so I just kind of tucked them in there. Something like that. That looks pretty good. So once you have all the pipes and wires and other bits of detail you're going to use ready, it's time to give those a quick coat of black, and then from there we'll paint them in the same way that we painted the basic assembly, with the brown acrylic paint, followed by a dry brush of the silver acrylic paint, so they tie in with the rest of the model. When that's done, we can glue them on. I used mostly super glue, but I used hot glue in some places as well. I put these extra details in the areas that didn't already have much detail to really fill out the piece. And then as you can see, I added the door to the door hatch, which I think looks great. Next, I used a little bit of wraith bone paint to paint some dials onto some of the little detail bits that I made. Wherever there's a little round area, I filled that in to represent the face of a little dial that would indicate the pressure or temperature or whatever is going on inside this piece of machinery. So I used a little bit of the red as well. That would indicate when the area on the dial to indicate the pressure has gone too high or something like that. You'll see in a moment. Next I use a bit of black paint and that part I'm going to paint in the bottom and the indicator finger thing. What is that thing called? I don't know. The, the, do, the doohickey. Okay, with a little bit of retributor armor I'll paint the outside just to make these things pop out a little bit. Now using a stencil, I'm going to add some letters and numbers to this thing to give it that sort of industrial feel. I went with the B. The reason I chose B is because it has uh, that stencil -y sort of divide between parts of the letters. As you can tell, the C, for example, is just a normal looking C. But I really wanted that, uh, that stencil look to it. So I dabbed in some white paint, and as you can see, there it is. Looks all right. I also decided to add a six. I chose six for the same reasons. I had that line through the middle that gives it that stencil quality. Uh, so this is, I don't know, machine B6 or sector B6. They're a little bit off, but it doesn't matter because this isn't for beauty. This is a grim industrial complex, and all that they need to know is the machine unit classification for maintenance or something. So there we go. And there we have the finished product. 
As you can see, I also added some little barrels at the bottom of some of the pipes. What these do is, by attaching to the pipe and to the building itself, they add a little bit of extra stability while also adding some interesting detail and really giving a clear indication of the scale. Uh, barrels are a known size relative to a humanoid character, so that really ties in the environment with the reality, which I really like. I designed this set to be quite versatile with the other things I've made on this channel. Here it is stacked on top of another one of the buildings I made on this channel. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. You know, I think we can go higher with this. Let's see how crazy we can get. In this shot, I've added a Games Workshop Alchemite stack. As you can see, the sets all look pretty good together. Being able to have versatile, combinable pieces is one of the reasons I give everything the same paint job. It really ties things together. Here I've combined a bunch of the projects we've made on this channel together. This is just one of an infinite number of combinations of these pieces. I hope you make your own unique pieces and you have fun combining them all together. So there we have it. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.